On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Flip has been saved. I am your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to today's episode. So the Office of Naval Research has operated this, Flip, the floating instrument platform. It's been under the control of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography in San Diego for years. The vessel was built back in 1962. And as you can tell from the image here, it is roughly a 700 ton vessel uh, shaped like a baseball bat, about 355 feet long. And what makes Flip unique is that you ballast down one end of it and it flips 90 degrees till it's standing upright in the middle of the ocean. It's an amazing platform. And this vessel was being sent to scrap down in Mexico. But at the last minute, deep, an organization sent out its representatives to save the vessel. And now the vessel is being towed to France where it's going to be put back into service. We're going to talk a little bit about this and why this vessel is so unique. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. So this is a story back in August by Mike Schuller, Internet's famous flip research vessel sent for scrap. So the concept of flip is very unique. You're able to take a vessel 355 feet long, you flood down one end of the vessel, and all of a sudden that end will go down to the bottom. You can put sensors on it, you can put any kind of instrumentation you want it, but in the upper part of the, the vessel, the part that remains above the water and partially below the water, you can have research areas. So the ship is designed to have a crew of about five or six on board. It can carry about 11 scientists on board and outfitted with sensors. It can register all the way down to 300 feet below water, giving you all the material you need. Now, while it takes 20 minutes to complete that, everybody says the last minute where the ship pitches from uh, horizontal to vertical is one of the most interesting on board. So I'll include in here a video that gives you a walking tour through Flip, but obviously one of the most unique things about the vessel is that since it's designed to go 90 degrees, they have a lot of redundancy built in. So you have uh, bathrooms like this with two sinks so that when the vessel flips, you're able to use them. Uh, a lot of the kitchen material is on hanging uh, brackets so that when the vessel undertakes its transition, it's able to be operated without a problem. Uh, it is towed out by a tugboat. Largely, it was done by military sealift command tugs. However, commercial tugs are used. And the reason you don't have any machinery propulsion on board is to deaden the noise so that when flip is up in the ocean, it's dead quiet. You don't have any radiant noise so it can measure it. And plus, the way it's designed, it looks like almost like a Louisville slugger bat. Larger at the end, that's underwater, narrower at top. It kind of bobs up in the water. It's a very stable platform once it's on position, making it ideal for monitoring the ocean, for waves, for oceanographic material. It just really turned Flip into a, uh, a vessel that was sought after by many for use in and around the area. So this is a story by John Conrad just came out the other day. Flipping ship just escaped the wrecker's claw and her story is mind blowing. Now, John actually has some personal experience having been on a tour of Flip. So he gives a really interesting uh, perspective on this. But what is interesting is how the vessel was saved at literally the last moment. Everything changed with Deep with one phone call. Julio Moresca was sitting in his London office for Deep. This is a subsea firm that is aiming to pioneer underwater human habitats when word about Flip being scrapped came across his desk. So Moresca and his colleagues basically started looking at this. And he got a phone call from the founder of the company, quote, save her, don't come back without her. And within 48 hours, a deep team was en route to Mexico, racing against time to intercept the vessel and save it. And within a very brief period of time, after some tense negotiations and a flurry of, of hurdles, deep secured ownership of Flip. The ship is to be towed from Mexico through the Panama Canal across the Atlantic to the Mediterranean, Flip is slated for a 12 to 18 month refit at MB92. That is a shipyard in Barcelona. They kind of specialize in refurbishing super yachts and other projects in the area. 
According to Rob Papworth, who's the group managing director, modernizing FLIP to further our understanding of the ocean is what's in our DNA. We're exceptionally proud to be involved in this historic endeavor. Uh, Deep's ambitions for FLIP go beyond restoration. They really want to make humans, you know, living in an aquatic world. So obviously the, the, the saving of FLIP has delighted everyone, including people over at the Office of Naval Research, Tom Drake, was quoted as saying, I'm delighted by Deep's decision to revitalize and modernize FLIP. This modernization will significantly expand our capabilities in ocean science, breathing new life into a vessel that has been vital to our mission. Again, I should have my Life Aquatic red uh, bur uh, hat on right now for this, but I was really delighted. It's a great story to hear that FLIP will be saved. One of my early aspects of my career was doing my master's in maritime history and nautical archaeology. Today, it's known as the Maritime Studies Program at East Carolina University. So we work a lot with institute groups like Scripps, Woods Hole, uh, all these oceanography sites uh, and institutions that are out there. So it, it, it's a really good feel to hear that Flip is going to be saved. I've actually seen her before. I've never been on board her, but saw her down in San Diego. Uh, I've had friends who have worked on her. And so just the, the fact that the vessel will live for another day uh, is, is a good feeling. And so I'm, I'm happy to hear it. So one last note before we sign off today. Uh, tomorrow is Halloween here in the United States. And some of my students decided to dress up like their favorite professor today. And I got to say, they looked amazingly sharp today in their outfits. I don't know. There's something about the way they were dressed today. I, I just kind of like it. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm starting something. I'm, I'm worried sometimes I'm having more of an effect on my students that's negative than positive. And this may be part of it. Uh, not sure they're all going to adopt Hawaiian shirts as their new garb, but it was a, a fun, refreshing day to have them dressed as such. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be alerted about new videos as it comes out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a big th thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly subscriber. So next episode, Sal, signing off.